This week, I'll be finishing up the first mold half. Welcome to another episode. First of all, I apologize for the audio quality last week. I'm not quite sure what was going on. I was getting some humming. I played around with the chords a little bit. It doesn't seem to be happening this week. So there is one thing you're probably going to notice, which is that I still need a lot to do a lot more learning about feeds and speeds, depth of cut and width of cut. Uh, before this video, uh, in the previous one, you'll notice that I broke a cutter. One of the things I've also learned is that cutters less than one eighth of an inch in diameter are called micro cutters. And of course, you have to be more careful with them, especially you know because they're so delicate and easy to break. I've gotten away with it in the past because I've used very conservative feeds and speeds, but I wanted to do a better job of understanding feeds and speeds and try to use more of the, the length of the cutter. And that's what led me to break the cutter last time. So I've learned about a couple of programs. One of them is HSM Advisor, and you'll see that a little bit in this episode. The other one is uh, G-Wizard, which seems to be what most people use. So I've gotten trial versions of those two programs. I'm going to spend some time with them. I'm going to learn them. And hopefully in future episodes, I'll be giving much better advice about feeds and speeds. But keep in mind, I'm self-taught. I'm still learning. There's a lot to learn. I've been able to do a great job, but that doesn't mean I'm always doing things in the best way. Anyway, let's get to working on the second mold half. And then in the next episode, we'll do the, sorry, the first mold half. And then in the next episode, we'll be working on the second mold half. And then the episode after that, we'll put it in the injection molding machine and make some parts. It took me a while to figure out the best strategy for milling the sprue and the runner. And what I ended up doing is similar to what I've done in the past, which is to use a ball nose cutter with uh, contour lines moving down in Z. But one of the things that was different here is that I wasn't getting quite the toolpath from Fusion 360 that I expected. So let's go ahead and select contour, which is what I ended up using. I'm going to open my sketches because I want to use a sketch to control the machining boundary. So the sketch I want to use is the runner box and ignore that we'll come back to this part in the moment, but I'll just select this right here. Make sure I have one, my one eighth inch ball, click run, and then it will calculate the tool path. And the issue is I wanted the tool to move past the end of the mold before coming back around to give a better finish at the entry. Probably didn't really matter that much, but it's what I wanted to do. So I couldn't figure out how to do that and eventually got an answer on the forums from uh, Mark Hughes of Hughes Tooling. And his suggestion was to use an extension like this so that it will include that extension when it's calculating the toolpaths. Let me show you how that works. If we head back to the model, I have this uh, component called runner extension that I will turn on and select. And you can see it's a fairly simple box that has an extension of the sprue coming out. That was uh, quite easy to make. I started with a sketch, extruded that down, and then chose another sketch, which was uh, just a projection of the, uh, the sprue, and then extruded that back. And I extruded this back 2 tenths, 0.2, sorry, 0.2 inches, um, because that seemed like a good number. You'll see later on that was actually a bad choice, and we'll come to, we'll come to that later. Going back to CAM, let's show how we would use this. So. Going back to our contour operation, I have two of them. Uh, if we recalculate, it's going to produce the exact same result. So there are a couple things we want to do. The first thing we want to do is change the machine boundaries. So instead of this, it is using, let me go back to that sketch. Okay, what happened to the sketch? Let's go back to the 
I think I lost some of the parts of the model. So let's go back to the cavity and you can see it got rolled back. Let's go back here. That got ro rolled back a little bit as well. Not quite sure why. Anyway, so now if we go back to the cam, there's our sketch. All right, good. So what I want to do here is change this so it's this and this. And if we calculate the tool, you'll see that looks good, right? But we need to look a little bit more carefully. Notice what happens when I hide this runner extension. You can see the toolpath is going way down, which is not at all what we want. There's no reason to mill this. The way we take care of that, let me show the extension again, is in the contour we have to also include this model. And we want to include this surface as well as that surface. When I include those two surfaces, it says include those in what is it's trying to, mod to mill away. And now I get the exact path that I'm looking for. So that's how I did that. I'll include a link below to the discussion on the community. Okay, so now I'm, let's go to the actual toolpath that I used. Let me hide this and hide the sketch. Okay, so there's the the toolpath as you can see. And uh, let's simulate that. So if I go all the way to the end and use tail, you can see that there's a slight uh, flatness on the bottom here. Now it's probably fine for injection molding, but I wanted that to be more of a circle. The rest of the path looks uh, pretty good. So the way I got rid of that is by adding a scallop with rest machining. So if you look here for the scallop, I selected the exact same rectangle as before, but down here I said rest machining from previous operation. And so doing rest machining from previous operation meant that it didn't have to mill most of the side here. It could just focus on the very bottom. Now this takes a while to calculate, uh, but the end result, if I simulate these two, gives me pretty much exactly what I wanted. So here the first operation gives us that, and now if we simulate this, you can see it's coming down and it's clearing out the last bit of the bottom, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, and that's exactly what I melt. <laughs>
I'm still learning how to do feeds and speeds. These are the settings that I used uh, with HSM Advisor. And you can see I was getting about 22 inches uh, per minute. Now, what I should have done is change the width of cut because since this is plunging down, it's going to be using more of the diameter. So let me change the width of cut to uh, close to the tool diameter and you can see it drops the feed rate down to 11. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this to something a little bit more conservative and change it to uh, about 10 inches per minute and see how that goes. The last two operations for this mold half are to mill the, the vents and the gates. I did those as two operations uh, for two different reasons. One is because this is really shallow and so it's a lot easier to mill uh, and I could use a different strategy. This one on the other hand is much deeper and it has, it has some draft angle on the walls. So for the vent I just used uh, horizontal and I set the bottom to be that face right there. So that's pretty straightforward. The contour, 
I did a similar thing. I set the bottom to be there, as you can see. Uh, there we go, that face. And then the other thing that I did is I set the step down to be five thousandths of an inch. And using a smaller step down means that I'll get a better finish on the walls. So let's go watch that, and uh, then that will be it for this mold half. And there we have it. You can see, um, let's see if I can get close, right here is the uh, mistake I made. And it's not very deep, so it might be okay. So I'm going to try it as it is. 